In this video, we demonstrate the use of the femtis bag in the aisle concept. Here we will be showing the femtis aisle implantation with the toric femtis aisle implant, coupled with the intelli axis, which is only available with the AI based Lensar femto laser cataract surgery. Uh, we will be fast forwarding the cataract surgery here because that is not much of relevance for this particular video. So we will be fast forwarding this uh, cataract surgery and uh, slow down to the normal speed or the relevant speed when we reach the relevant parts of the surgery. You will see here that I am removing the cortex, final cortex after a successful femtol laser cataract surgery. And now you will see the intelli axis, uh, which is a patent or a proprietary mark by the Lensar machine where it creates two marking nubs on the exact axis where the aisle has to be placed and on through the capsular axis which makes the placement of the toric aisle very very easy now this is how the femtis aisle looks like it has four flanges two flanges the two larger flanges will rest on the anterior capsule and two smaller flanges on the side will also rest on the anterior capsule which makes a rock steady uh, aisle implantation onto the capsule rectus margin without zero rotation. So the aisle is placed into the cartridge, two leading side channels and the left trailing side channel. You can also have one right leading side channel and two trailing uh, side channels and the lens will be placed entirely in a butterfly cartridge after the viscoelastic has been placed. Make sure there's not much of I wish for elastic in the cartridge, otherwise the lens will float on top of that. You load the butterfly cartridge. Now we will demonstrate how the lens looks actually. Now there are two larger haptics which will actually be lying into the capsular bag. These two large haptics, flange haptics. And then there will be two notched anterior clips, this and the second one. They will be on the anterior part of the lens. These two notch anterior clips will also be on the anterior part of the capsular axis. This is a trailing channel or the notch. So there is one trailing channel on the left side and two on the leading side. Or you could have the same on one on the right side and two on the trailing side. On the side channels or the side brackets nubs of the lens are two clips which will again be pulled out over the capsular axis. So when the lens is absolutely placed into the capsular bag, the two large flanges will be inside the capsular bag and four clips or four nubs will lie over the capsular axis margin. So which will make the lens to be lying into the capsular axis margin. This is how the lens is actually placed. Once you place the lens, you can actually remove the viscoelastic from behind the IOL and then you pull the two larger notches above the capsule axis margin which ensures a complete freezing of the movement and then the lateral two notches can be pulled up over the capsule axis margin. Now this makes the lens 100% secure and zero rotation once the capsule axis has been locked into the lens. This is how the lens will look on a cross section. This is the best possible method to put in a toric lens and Femtis is an EDOF lens which works fantastic and it has shown very very good results in our patients. So using this Femtis toric IOL in the patient with flax has been an exceptional experience for me. Now these are the two nubs which are marked on the capsular axis. These are called the intelli axis. They are made by the Lensar machine, which is a femtolaser machine. We've done nearly 20,000 surgeries on this machine and it has exceptional results. Now, once the nubs have been identified, you inject the lens into the bag. You could have two choices. Either you could place the lens with the leading haptics in the bag and trailing haptics out the bag. Remove the viscoelastic from the bag and then place it. Or you could do it the way I am doing. I load the lens into the capsule axis, into the bag. 
you will see that I push in the trailing haptics into the bag. Now the large haptics and all the other four notches are inside the capsule directions. Now, after the oil has been placed in the bag and you can see those two IntelliAxis nubs, you can finally rotate the lens to the desired position. The lens is in 100% same position as required for this particular case. You can see the capsule axis nubs over the toric axis markings of the IOL. Viscoelastic has been installed. Now you can actually go with the Sinsky and pull the notch, the anterior notch of one side, align it well with the capsule axis nub. Make sure you pull the second nub over the capsule axis margin and align it with the nub. You have to be very careful because once these anterior notches have been placed over the capsule axis margin, you will seize or stop seeing the IntelliAxis nubs. So just before you pull them out and lock them, make sure that the alignment of the toric lens is exactly similar or same line of the toric axis of the lens and the IntelliAxis nubs. Now, having locked these two bigger notches, now you go on to the lock, locking the lateral notches of the Femtes toric IOL. The third notch has been also locked. Again, push in viscoelastic. Use the side port again to lock the third anterior notch or the two, the second smaller notch over the capsule rexus margin. Now, once all these four margins are locked, you will stop seeing the capsule rexus margin. That is the end point. If you are still able to recognize the capsule rexus over the IOL, which means that the notches have not been enclaved properly. As you will notice here, once my IOL has been locked over the capsule rexus, the capsule rexus has totally become not visible which means that the capsule axis is now locked in the rim of the IOL. This makes this lens unique. That is why it is also called as bag in the IOL concept. Because once this lens is locked onto the capsule axis, it will never rotate. So this gives the near 100% surety of non-rotation of the toric IOL. Sometimes you may have some residual viscoelastic behind these IOLs, but these are training channels which you can see on the sides of the lens from which the viscoelastic will actually eventually drain out. Now, these are the draining channels which you just got demonstrated. Thank you.